Hey everyone, this is Alan Fire. Welcome back to a new exciting action VFX tutorial. What? What? Whoa, 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 whoa! What's going on? Something's not right. We have a problem here. See, <clears throat> we need to composite these explosions behind the building, and we'll do this by creating a map. So that's the subject we'll be covering today. And so, and so what mats do, mats give us the information of where things are supposed to be visible and where they're not supposed to be visible. For instance, in this shot, we have these explosions. They're supposed to be coming up behind the building. So the explosions are not supposed to be where the buildings are. Lesson of reality 101, you can't see things behind things that are opaque. They're obscured. They're covered. Because, I mean, that's, isn't that why people wear clothes, right? I mean, if we could, like, see through clothes, like, I mean, why would we have clothes, right? So, uh, anyway, moving on from one important thing to another, we'll be doing this so we don't have to explain or cover this process over and over again every time we do a tutorial involving maps. We'll just be able to bring up the option of watching this tutorial to make sure no one gets lost. So, what we're going to do is create a new solid, control y shortcuts. I highly recommend shortcuts. I'm going to say highly as strong as I can say it. Highly recommend shortcuts. That wasn't very impressive. Um, but yeah, shortcuts, control Y, create a new solid. Let's call this building mat like that. And then we'll go ahead and parent this to the tracking data so that the, the solid kind of follows the motion of the background, the scene. And uh, what we need to do is scale this up so that it doesn't go out of the picture. Something like that should be fine. And then let's go ahead and turn off the visibility for this layer so we can see the background, know where to mask. Let's go up here to the pen tool. And then we're going to go all the way over here, click here. And then looks good. Go up here, go all the way around, and maybe make a middle point here. Eat supper, give me a break. All right, so there's, a, there's our mask. And we can turn on our matte layer. You can see what we got. Looks cool. And then after we do this, even though it, we have tracking and it kind of follows the general motion of the scene, we do need to go through and add keyframes to the mask. So another shortcut, hit M. That's going to open our mask path um, parameter. And then we can hit the keyframe stopwatch button here. Let's turn it off again. Let's just go to different points and make sure this is uh, the, the mask is accurately around the borders of this shape. All right. That, that looks pretty good to me. Only four keyframes. Key we did this really fast. All right, so that's the mat for the building. Um, but we also got a few more objects. We got his, his head here. That's important. We also got the power line because the explosions are going to come up behind this power line. So for this power line, what I'm going to do is create a new solid. Hit OK. We'll scale it up like, the la like we did last time. And then I'll turn it off, turn off the visibility for that layer. And then I'm going to draw a mask where this power line is. So kind of go beyond the edges because the camera moves around a little bit, something like that. And then we'll make sh then we need to make sure to remember to attach this to our tracking. And uh, let's go ahead and turn the visibility on. What I'm going to do is go to the effects and presets, type in this effect called stroke. I'll apply this to the layer. And uh, and for the paint style, let's choose uh, on transparent. Let's turn up the brush size, something like this. And then what we're going to do is make a duplicate of the original footage. So hit Control D. That's another shortcut for Edit Duplicate. And let's drag this duplicated footage layer right below the, this mat we just created. And then on the footage layer, on the Track Mat column, let's choose Alpha Mat. If you don't see the Track Mat column, just toggle switches. So what that did, if we turn off the original footage layer, it just created a general mask around the power line. So next, what we're going to do is key out the blue part of the footage so it'll leave the black part. And then we'll just have the power line. So to do this, I'll create a new adjustment layer, Control Alternate Y. Adjustment layers affect all layers that are below itself. We can probably turn off uh, building mat for now. And to this adjustment layer, I'll apply linear color key effect. Apply this to the adjustment layer. I'll grab this pen tool and just click this here. And that just leaves the power line. We don't want to. We don't want it to be very thick. This is probably good how it is. Um, possibly turn down the softness if we want more of that power line. But that looks pretty good there. So there's our power line. So we want to pre-compose all of these layers we use to create this power line mat. And what and what I'm about to say here is a pretty important thing to note. We need to be careful about pre-composing layers when some of the layers you're going to pre-compose 
are parented to other layers that you might not precompose. For instance, this white solid is parented to the track. So if we don't precompose this track with all these layers, then it's no longer going to be parented to the track and it's going to mess everything up. So what we have to do is create a duplicate of the track, control D, move it up here, and then parent this white solid to the duplicate of the track. And then, and then precompose the duplicate track with everything else. So precompose, and, and so remember this technique because we'll be using it later on so that I won't have to explain it again. And that's one reason why it can be very beneficial to watch a tutorial the whole way through. Especially in my tutorials, there's a lot of information that I explain once and for all so I don't have to waste time explaining it over and over again. So we'll call this power line. And then we can turn on our building mat. So the last thing we need to do is mask out this person's head. So this would be a little bit more difficult, but what we're going to do is we're going to do some matte work in Mocha Pro. This is exciting because I don't believe we've done this before. Maybe we did it in the flamethrower tutorial. I don't know, but we, we need to cover it today. So we're going to search here Mocha Pro. And remember, this is a third party plugin. It does not come with After Effects. You can use on the animation track in Mocha AE, Mocha for After Effects. But Mocha Pro, the plugin, makes life a whole lot easier, especially since it works with a lot of different with a larger variety of video formats. So we'll apply this to the footage layer. Let's click on this icon here, Mocha. So basically how this works, I'm not gonna go over the entire process just to save time. That would be wasteful and boring. And we don't want these tutorials to be boring. Please no. Um, what we're gonna do is grab this tool here and just make a mask around his head. Like that. And so the advantage of Mocha Pro is that we can actually track this mask. So we can click this track forward button. And then eventually when the mask kind of begins to slip, slip out of shape, we can, we can click the stop button here and just make some adjustments. And these adjustments are going to interpolate between these, these green keyframes from this keyframe to this keyframe. And, that, and that's what makes it really nice. We have those nice tracking properties, but also manual adjustment interpolation. So we'll just go forward here and track this motion. And then once we're done, we'll hit export shape data and then hit copy to clipboard. So then we can create a new solid, go back to the very beginning and hit control V to paste the mat. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on our other mats back on. So there we go. We have uh, the building, the head and the power line. So we've talked about mats for a while, but I, there's one last technique I really want to show you because this is a really good technique and it will definitely come to use. It'll be very helpful. It'll be an awesome addition to your skill set inventory. So what I'm going to do is pre-compose the head and building mat, but we also got to pre-compose it with the track because of the parenting. So right click, pre-compose, and uh, what I'll do is make a duplicate of the stock footage. We'll turn this on and in the track mat column, we'll choose alpha mat. So then we'll pre-compose those two layers together, pre-compose, move all attributes, and then here's where the cool part comes in. We'll go to our effects and presets window and type in key cleaner. Let's apply this to the head building layer and voila, check that out. So what it does is uses the pixel information to find the detailed edges. So let's clean this up a little bit. Let's turn down the additional edge radius to maybe something like four. And then let's apply a simple choker one to just kind of tighten things up but also to get rid of that blue sky outlining so there we go that technique should definitely come to use it's very nice it would be a lot easier than grabbing the pen tool and masking around every one of those bumps such a friendly technique so the last thing we'll do is pre-compose the power line the head building layer together pre-compose and we'll call this mat so now we have one layer final complete the finished mat layer and this will make our life a lot easier as we go as we continue this project, having a clean, complete mat in one layer. Okay, so we've come to the end of this episode. We're done with all the learning. Um, and while that was so fun growing in our knowledge and abilities, uh, it's time for us to review and, and celebrate uh, what we've put our efforts into. So here's this episode in a nutshell. Uh, remember, I highly recommend shortcuts. Uh, tracking data can often help a good mat. We combined the power of layer mats and keying. We talked about pre-composing and pre-composing layers that are parented. We used Mocha Pro to do some basic rotoing, and then we did that juicy technique at the end involving key cleaner.
So I really hope I was able to make this tutorial a valuable use of your time. Hopefully your skill set inventory is now larger and healthier. My name is Alan Fire, and until next time, I'll leave you to it.